I got involved in the Pulitzer Dialogue program when um, the New Mexico Humanities Council approached our library and wanted us to participate in the book discussions. And, you know, we thought it was a great idea, uh, but our facilitator, uh, Lynn, was only able to do it um, twice. So I'm going to be facilitating the next ones. The question, I should ask this before you see that, when you think of Pulitzer Prize winning books, what, what do you think in your mind? What do you expect? My name is Lynn Heneman. I'm the discussion leader for uh, this evening's discussion on the book, The Plague of Doves by Louise Erdrich. But when I read it the second time, I really liked it because I started seeing how she's knitting this complexity yeah. together as a writer, mm -hmm. you know. I think it was really nice to hear from other readers from different backgrounds, different experiences, um, different takes on the book uh, in terms of their opinions and perspectives on certain themes that, you know, I was either mulling over or thought about or that were completely new and introduced. I don't see the connection to the visions at all. I don't think that's why there's a cult. I think it's a comment on colonial. I don't actually like this term, but it's the term of the era of the colonialist lifestyle, right? Or, you know, and I think she, because I was kind of taken with, you know, the revivals, you know, and then bringing in all different people into this cult. There was you know, reference to just this lack of family life. I mean, why is the cult not the, yeah. you know, uh, uh, just a direct result of the fact that he didn't have parents? People were talking about uh, issues that came up. People were talking about how they felt reading, how they felt discussing. And I feel like uh, it just opened up a lot of dialogue. Um, broke a lot of, uh, I guess, the ice between uh, people wanting to discuss things that they might not normally discuss, but having the book discussion opened up the door and allowed them to have these discussions. I think uh, one of the major themes of the whole book is, is um, that you can't be successful at dividing human beings up into these precise categories. I mean, none of us really fits. Really, you start digging, and you often don't have to dig very far. We don't fit those categories. People will um, learn new perspectives. You know, you read these books that can be controversial or uh, divisive, and you form your opinions. You come to a book discussion group, and you hear all these other opinions, and people can really um, open their mind. I think about Charles Dickens and just like death, 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 like over and over. I think what I appreciate about like indigenous authors and you know authors from non-Western backgrounds, a lot of like death definitely comes up, but just like she said, it's it's taken in a more balanced perspective, right? Like death occurs, death happens, but that's not the central focus. The central focus is maybe on the relationships or the life or like the interactions or products after the fact, right? But but that morbid obsession with finality isn't there as, as strongly as it is in Eurocentric culture. I think, you know, spaces like this, programs like this, um, are great in terms of engaging and including more folks in the community, um, applying a little bit more of that pressure and motivation to read, finish a book, um, because you have a set date and a set time where, you know, you're expected to discuss and talk about it. Um, but I think it does a nice job of spreading that culture of literacy and not in a very oppressive or dominant way, but in a more, we are discussing the stories and narratives brought up by folks who you might relate to, you might not relate to, um, but it's really just an open platform for you to relate on a more human level. Mm -hmm.